Welcome to uh, MATLAB, Learning MATLAB Lesson 10. In this one, we're going to actually uh, do uh, the FFT. This um, lesson, uh, you know, bookmark it, whatever, because when you're in uh, BIEN 3300, the Signals and Systems class, I'm sure that something like this um, assignment is going to be required of you. Um, we're going to do the Fourier transform of a made up uh, a bunch of sine waves put together. Um, but your in-class assignment is going to have uh, uh, is going to be an actual uh, data file that you're going to calculate the Fourier transform of. All right, so I made a I made a directory Leo FFT. My initials make it what, how whatever it is, but don't don't call it FFT because um, th that's already taken by MATLAB. So I'm going to edit Leo FFT .com. Now, um, so I want to create a, a sign, a, um, a sum of some sine waves, right? So my, I want to make my sampling rate, Fs, equal to 1,000. And, um, uh, and I want to make the number of points equal to about is 1,500. So I want to make my and I want to make my time array. So uh, the, the the time increment delta t is one over the sampling rate. Oops. And so then I want to set up my time. It's be, it'll go from zero i delta t to n minus one times delta t. And then n minus one, that's a long story why that is instead of n. Uh, that's, a, that's a 3300 question. Um, now I want to make three sine waves. So I want to make the first frequency equal to 20 hertz, the second frequency equal to 30 hertz, and the third frequency equal to 40 hertz. And, um, and then I'm going to make the... Uh, the um, uh, signal X um, composed of three um, sine waves. So three times the sine of two times I times F1 times T. And I'll give it a phase. If time we'll talk about that. Plus one times cosine of two times pi times f2 t minus 0 0.3 plus two, two times cosine of two times pi times f3 of t plus 2.4. I, I, um, I, um, this is a, this somebody else on the internet did a, um, a, a lesson on I'm just copying the um, uh, sine waves, the, the cosine waves and the angles down the same as uh, what he did. Um, so let's look at that first. Let's say plot px. I'm going to run it. just a series of um, added up it's a weird signal I mean it doesn't mean anything but there it is it's just three if you add up these three sine waves and with these phase angles and everything this is what it looks like so each time I'll look at it I might comment that out after a while so take the Fourier transform of a time domain signal, you just say x equals FFT of x. Now, there's a convention here. The convention is that things in the frequency domain are all caps and things in the time domain are lowercase. So capital X, and of course, MATLAB is case sensitive, so capital X is the frequency domain version of the time domain signal, uh, lowercase x.
how do we look at it? Well, we we, we want to um, uh, let's just um, I'm going to run this. So now X is 1500, right? 1500 points and um, uh, um, uh, but it's um, it's not no longer a double it's a complex value right so uh, let's look at a, a range here let's go um, x of 30 to 35 34 it's all zero it's zero 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 ah this is non-zero Right, and and it's multiplied times a thousand, so it's twenty two hundred pl plus four hundred and forty seven j, uh, the i, the imaginary variable. So this is a complex number. It's a complex number because when we did this, we added a phase angle to each of these things, right? So um, uh, uh, this happens to be the first one, right? Um, uh, the first one, the magnitude of this is going to be about three, we think. So, so, what, um, so we first off, we don't want to look at it in the complex domain. We just want to look at the magnitude of the signal, right? The the phase of the signal. You're going to look at magnitude and phases of signal in um, uh, signals and systems classes. So I'm not going to get into too much detail. I'm only going to look at the magnitude here. So the the way to do the magnitude in of a Fourier transformed signal is to say x mag equals the absolute value of x. And if you just plot that, for signal, um, you it looks okay. So let's look at this. First off, the y-axis is in the thousands, huh? And the x-axis goes to fifteen hundred. So that's right. And then this, so that's so so there are 1,500 points in X mag, just like there are 1,500 points in X and 1,500 points in T. Huh. So um, the one thing, there are two things to note. One thing is that the y-axis doesn't. I mean, there's supposed to be three numbers, one, two, and three, and the y-axis is supposed to be three, one, and two, because that's the coefficients in front of those cosine waves. So something's wrong with this y-axis, right? The x-axis. What are we? What is? What are we looking at here with the x-axis? The x-axis is in frequency, but we don't have any scale. And 1500 is that right? That's not right. So we need to fix the scale of this graph. That's one thing we need to do. The second thing we need to do is notice what happens to the Fourier transform. This point is exactly a mirror image of that point. This this point is exactly a mirror of image of that point, and that this point is an exact mirror image of this point, and it's all centered around the center, the middle frequency here, which is 750. All FFT signals wrap around this center middle frequency here, and so this half is a mirror image of this half. And I only I only want to look at this first half. That's the only thing I care about. And so we're only going to look at half the signal. That's going to be important uh, moving uh, forward in a minute. <clears throat> so if we want to, so I, I just commented out all these plots, and I'm going to I'm going to make up the frequency. The frequency has to consist of um, uh, the st stepping. What's the what's the incremental um, uh, delta f that you're having? It's called f zero, the fundamental frequency, f zero, and it's Easy. It's equal to um, the um, the number of points times delta t. That, that's the one over that one over the number of points times delta t. Then when you're making a frequency axis, you, go, you start at zero, you go by f zero up to n minus one times f0. Then when you plot f x mag, it 
here's the thing that now this maximum frequency value is equal to the sampling frequency a thousand that always works the maximum value of uh of the maximum value of your uh, FFT plot on the x-axis is always going to be the sampling frequency. The halfway point, it has a special name called the Nyquist frequency, is half of that, 500. <clears throat> Y-axis is still messed up, right? The normalization for um, the normalization for the Y for X mag um, is uh, pretty easy. You just want to divide X mag by n over 2. The, the 2 is because I, I'm only interested in the first mirror part of it. I'm not interested in both sides, the, the, the stuff way at the top, the mirrored part, and the other part. So I'm really, I only want to look at half. That's why it's n over 2. And then I want to, I want to change the axis so I can actually see it. Axis 0 to, I don't know, um, 60, 0 to 3.5. I'm guessing it's going to be the right amount. And lo and behold, oh, and, and I want to make them points because it's points here. So let's go red circles. And lo and behold, at 20 hertz, we have three. At 30 hertz, we have one. And at 40 hertz, we have two, which corresponds exactly to the made-up signal here. Three, one, and two the magnitudes of these various sine waves and the frequencies right too. So that's how you normalize that's how you normalize a frequency domain plot. Um, if you're just looking at the first half, you want to divide by the number of points by two, the magnitude value of it. And you want to make the uh, the frequency axis using F0 here, which is one over n times delta T, where LCD is defined. So that is how you do the Fourier transform of a, of, an, of a signal. And that's how you plot it out. Cool. That's it.